Oh, I'm Andy, 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 Andy Fandango. <laughs> I've already done a video on my old BBC Master 128 that had been under my bed for many years. Now I want to take things a bit further. I've been looking at a Pi code processor for a while, and now I've saved up my pennies and bought one. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it, or what's possible, but let's find out. Back in the day, Acorn produced the Cheese Wedge 6502 code processor for their BBC computer range. It had its own box and 64K of RAM. The host machine did the I.O., keyboard, sound, graphics, and the CoPro did the computational stuff, and that ultimately gave you better performance and more free memory. But you couldn't just take software off the shelf and run it better. Basic programs and 6502 code that didn't write directly to screen memory would work, but that discounted most games. The coprocessor I have is based on a Raspberry Pi, so it does have an ARM chip and we keep the Acorn DNA, but we're nearly 40 years on. This is an internal kit and that's something Acorn designed into the BBC Master. The tube interface which connects coprocessors to the host has an external connector for a cheese wedge and two internal connectors that make install pretty damn easy even for a bozo like me. It all fits very nicely and we get an optional HDMI output directly from the copro board that works in native ARM mode or we can continue to use the host machine's video output. The HDMI output is actually the only awkward bit. I've got a flat male to female cable to make it work without modifying the case, but even that means I can't tightly screw the case back together, so it's a bit of a compromise. The documentation shows we've got a variety of configs, from standard 6502 copros running at 1980 speeds, to fast 6502, to native ARM, along with some other stuff like Z80, 6809, and 306. So let's do something crazy, like comparing performance by using a simple BBC Basic program to calculate prime numbers using a brute force method, so there's lots of iterations and lots of integer maths. Nice! Here's the code for it, and we're going to run it on a standard BBC Master, so no coprocessor is enabled. We're calculating the first 50 prime numbers. It takes 18.66 seconds. Now we run it again, but with a configuration that emulates the original Cheese Wedge external coprocessor. This time it takes just under 12 seconds. If we emulate the old internal coprocessor, that goes down to under 9 seconds. With the fast 6502 emulation though, we get much quicker. We're down to nearly a tenth of a second. If we use the native ARM configuration, we can still run BBC Basic programs. Now the program runs in under a tenth of a second. In fact, we can calculate the first 1,000 primes in just two and a half seconds. Now let's run a simple graphics test where we'll use standard BBC Basic commands to draw a load of lines on the screen in the shape of a bow tie. Here we see very little improvement because the host machine is still doing all the graphics. If we now use the Pi Video HDMI output, then that changes dramatically. And now behold the magnificence of my spreadsheet that shows how performance changes for computations and graphics in BASIC across different configurations. That's easy for you to say. I use Elite in a lot of videos because it's an 8-bit classic, but more importantly because there are a lot of versions written for various different machines, so it's great for comparisons. Elite was written for BBC computers with several variations including an enhanced master version and a specially written 6502 co-pro version. Our baseline at the top left is the standard version. At the top right we have the original coprocessor version from disk running on the fast config. You can see it's very flickery, but you can get a flicker free version from the internet and that's bottom left. The CoPro versions do run noticeably quicker than the standard version. There's also an executive version available on the internet. It was designed to run with a coprocessor, but you have to watch the intro before you get to start the game. That's at the bottom right and is recognisable by the futuristic text that replaces the standard BBC font. The executive version has some other stuff you might like, including lots of credits, 
and a fully equipped ship. The flight controls, which are quite difficult to master anyway, are particularly twitchy under the coprocessor versions. But now the fun has to end, and I'm going to go back to code, but don't switch off just yet because I'm going to show you why BBC Basic was the best back in the 80s and create trippy graphics with recursive trees. Oh. This is a nice performance test because it combines some maths, lots of iterations and plenty of graphics. BBC Basic was a proper structured language. Even in early versions you could write procedures and functions and pass parameters on the stack, which means procs can call themselves recursively just as you'd expect in proper languages like C or Pascal. On a standard machine we can see the program in action and it takes 10 seconds to draw a tree 7 branches deep. Using the 4 MHz CoPro emulator that comes down to under 5 seconds and using the Fast6502 it's less than a second. So what about using the native ARM with its own video? How long do you reckon that'll take? Zero seconds. Now I've literally broken physics, let's try a tree 15 branches deep. Even that takes less than half a second, but it's becoming a bit of a white blob, so let's add some colour. And now we'll go real deep. 20 branches to create what I call the multicoloured grub brain tree thing. We could never run this without the Raspberry Pi, not only because of the speed, but also the memory consumed on the stack. We've seen some huge improvements in the speed of calculations and graphics using good old BBC Basic, which made me think. Could you write a fast vector graphics game in interpreted Basic? Something unthinkable back in the 80s. So I set about writing an Asteroids-like demo to see what I could do in a couple of days. Here's the first part of the code, with the main loop and a procedure to draw a spaceship in the middle of the screen. In the next part we have the procedures to draw, initialize and update the asteroids. The third part of the code has procedures to draw, update and fire bullets. The last part of the code has procedures to detect a collision between a bullet and an asteroid and to split an asteroid in two. And this is what it looks like running in graphics mode 20. Now the host BBC Micro isn't really doing much at all. Waiting for me to press escape, not much else. But it's still pretty cool for someone who struggled as a kid to get basic to do anything fun. It'll even run in mode zero if you want to keep more of that old school feel. If you look on the internet, there's a 16 line basic demo program kicking around called Bubble Universe. I found this port to BBC Basic on star.org.uk done by Big Ed and his mate Dave. I thought this would be just the thing to try on my new toy, so here it is. Enjoy, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.